In the wake of George Floyd's death, more people have had conversations about race in America. Tonight, we are having one of those conversations as Susan Elizabeth Littlefield answers this good question. What is cultural appropriation and is it harmful? How do you define cultural appropriation? It's complicated. In fact, the term isn't even in the dictionary, but there are examples of it everywhere. It's the use of uh, symbols or culture, music or attributes of a particular society or culture that you admire for the purpose of, you know, fetishizing that culture. From old time pioneers to current celebrities, some examples of cultural appropriation are subtle, others blatant, as the civil rights scholar explains. It's easy when we're talking about the obvious ones, blackface or the use of the N word. It becomes more complicated when we're talking about something that's actually celebratory. Like hair braiding, for instance. Me wearing braids is gonna be completely different meaning than you as a white woman wearing braids. Braids date back thousands of years to North Africa to denote beauty and culture. Then during slavery, women wore braids for their durable style. Braids were even used as secret codes to help people escape bondage. Years later, Bo Deering debuted braids of her own. Black women have been put out of jobs and can't do things like cheer because of their hairstyles. But if a white woman gets bow braids, they can wear that and it's considered just trendy and edgy and they can do it. Meanwhile, we're seen as unprofessional. Scholars say cultural appropriation can also be seen in music, in food, in mascots and with holiday costumes. It is harmful and it's harmful to that that young uh, white child who's dressing up as an Indian and going hoo, 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 as much as to the native kid meeting them on the street. It's harmful to both of them. She says from hairstyles to headdresses, people profit off the native culture without understanding the country's history. When that's, those things are taught, then people will understand about cultural appropriation. And how do you appreciate a culture without appropriating it? Dr. Williams says it's important to buy clothes, eat food, and listen to music from other cultures while keeping this question in mind. So what's the impact on the community that you're appropriating from? How do they feel about those symbols? Because in a way, that in and of itself is its own litmus test. Susan Elizabeth Littlefield, WCCO 4 News. And Dr. Williams says that another way to avoid appropriation is if you do choose to buy clothes, eat food, or listen to music from other cultures, make sure the person who profits is from that culture. If you have a good question, you can email us by visiting wcco.com links.